don't have a lot of time, but very briefly, I want to go over open textbooks, which are part of a larger group of, of open educational resources. Are you all familiar with what open educational resources are? No? Let me, I'll show you. Um, We go to that research and subject guides Mark showed. Um, actually, Laura wanted me to point this out too, just to show you real quickly. Did you know that you all have um, uh, pages, uh, libguides that uh, your department librarians have constructed to support your departments? Are you familiar with these? No? <laughs> Surprise? <laughs> well, there's, there's over here. And it's also where you can find out who your subject librarian is to and how to contact them. And so we'll go, since Jim hasn't seen his, one for political science. And there's a page that Jody Shepard has constructed. And did you know you can also have your librarian construct a page for your course, a custom page, with any resources you want. So you could even take, if you find an eBrary book, you could have a link in there or whatever, anything you want. So. You can construct. We have this, the software is really easy to use for librarians, and they can make a custom page for you. In fact, if you go, I'll just show you. If we go, you know, yeah. So, um, I go back. You can see there are even there are some here like Wendy Diamond constructed one for accounting four three seven. So you know, so you can do that too. I don't know if you were aware of that. Just want to point that out to you. There's also, since it's a LibGuide, uh, that's where I have another link to this affordable learning solutions page. And here's a definition of affordable learn of open educational resources. They're, they're free resources, but they're also open. There's free and open are not the same things. It's a, it's a legal thing. When you have a license, something may be free, but because of copyright law, it may be totally restricted on what you can do with it. Whereas the idea with open educational resources is to have a license attached to them so you know what you can do with them. It's a big change. And the licenses people are using is something called Creative Commons. Have you heard of that? No? It's, um, it's really a neat program they've got going where you can assign a license to uh, anything you create. You write photograph that has different levels of copyright um, restrictions. Like you can have a license, for example, that just Attribution, where the person that made it can say, you can use it as long as you give me credit, and you can do whatever you want with it. There's some licenses at the other extreme say, you only can use it, but you can't alter it, you can't change it, you can't you know, redistribute it, right? So, but it's really, I'll, I'll even show you some lights, but it's a really cool thing just to be aware of. Um, and there's even search engines, you, you, even Google, if you go to advanced search, you can do a Creative Commons search, and if you do that, to find materials and their licenses. And it's really handy if you want to know what you can do with something, right? Because I don't know if when you send me a course, you know, what is the copyright on this? You may not say, you may not know what you can do with it, you know, to keep out of trouble. Anyway, but um, that's that's what's really different about the open educational resource movement. And you're going to even the federal government's even doing things like the Department of Labor's going to release two billion dollars for community college to retrain people. And any materials that are produced from that program has to have a Creative Commons attribute only license on it. So be aware of that. So it's really cool because when you tag these things, then when your search engines can pull them up too. They're, you know, they're machine readable, they're human readable, and they're lawyer readable is what they're, how they market it. So it's really a cool new thing just to be aware of and start paying attention to. It's, it's really what's different. You know, because there's been free stuff in the past, right? But, um, and don't forget public domain materials too. So that could be an alternative. But, because things from the federal government, you can basically do whatever you want with, right? If you find a book, federal government, you can do what you want with it, basically. So just to, um, so let's see. And so what you've got, the, um, the chancellor's website, it's pretty cool. It's got some neat tools on it. Um, for example, if you're using a textbook and you want to see if there's an alternative open textbook, they built a tool where you can type in, put in the ISBN here. It 
See, there it tells you, there's the book. So it confirms that. And here are alternative textbooks. They're open. You can do whatever you want with them. You can revise them. You can share them. You know, and so, so you can customize them. So I think the, the drawback mainly with the open textbook is there's not, a lot of them aren't that good, high quality, because it really takes a lot of work to make a good textbook, right? But that's a problem. But, and the, the, and, but there are some groups that are producing high quality textbooks. There's just not a lot of them. But we're early in this. And it's happening. You're getting foundations that are supporting this. Um, well, even the state of California. Have you heard about that? The state senate has, it has a bill, $25 million for 50 new college textbooks. Have you heard about this? Yeah, it's a bill, and it's, it's going through committees now. And what they want to do is release 25 of these textbooks in the fall of 2013. And 25 textbooks in the fall of 2014. And they'll be free college textbooks, and they'll be priced, They'll have a Creative Commons license, which allows instructors to customize them. You know about that? And another one I just came across that's relatively new is called OpenStaxCollege.org, and they are spending a bunch of money. They got philanthropies supporting it. William and Hewlett Foundation. Um, Laura Hewlett Foundation supporting this. So they have, they're getting some money, because it costs money. But they're going to, supposedly in March 2012, they're going to release a physics textbook and a sociology textbook. And these are going to be like, you know, the quality of a commercial textbook, you know, where they have it. They get an expert in the field. They get, they peer review it. They, they have professional editors. You know, it's going to be really high quality. But, you know, they don't have a lot. But, you know, it's a start. Um, and that's on your handout, too. We just don't have a lot of time. That's OpenStaxCollege.org. Um, and another one I'm really excited about is called FlatWorld. Have you heard of that? They're, they're commercial. They're for profit, but they have a completely different business model where they get a faculty member, join the group, they produce a textbook, but they have, you know, it's the high quality stuff, professionally produced, editors, just as good a quality, and it's free. And their business model is, though, they're going to make money on selling um, print copies, supplemental materials. But they've got funding. They got um, Random House, Bertelsmann, AG, to back them. They got some money. So now that's a problem, though. They're really good, but they're 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 not a lot of them. They're, just pull up Flat World. Yeah. In fact, go out and pull up Humanities and Social Sciences. Pull up. Uh, See, let's do psychology. Let's do introduction to psychology. Now, I wonder to, sh okay. I encourage you to go and look at these. And one of these had the Creative Commons license down in the bottom right. Let's see if we can find it. There's about this book. Under I, well, can we, um, Anyway, I, yeah, I just ran out of time, but that was cool. You could go on here and have the Creative Commons license and explain what you could do with this one. With their license on this one, you could adapt it, do, your, do whatever you want with it. You had to give attribution, and you could, but you couldn't resell it. And if you, yeah, so. It's like professors who have customized it, and then they can share it, so you actually they, get the from the book. Yeah. There's a, that one link I gave you, the link to links, it's on the bottom of your handout. Um, links from today's presentations. Yeah. You see that one? And it's yeah. got, the address is, the campus address, LCMT, for, that's Library Collection Management, forward slash march9.html. That has, right here, the Steinberg, head of the Senate. You can read about it. And then there's some other, and the some articles about it. You can go look at the bill. Yeah, it has the bill too. There are links to the bill if you go to Steinberg's page. Um, do you want to pull up another one? Just at collegetextbooks.org. Go to link to links. 
This one's cool. Um, community colleges, students really been hit hard by the cost of textbooks. Think about the percentage of the cost of their education to the relationship to textbooks. So California, there have been a lot of community colleges behind this and involved with this. And this group is becoming bigger, though, but yeah, a lot of uh, groups. But you can see they have a lot of uh, funding, and, it, and you can go in here and look for textbooks, too. This is really neat. Uh, just don't have, just, I just want to, yeah, what's your interest? Hope you, get inter you can go investigate further if it looks of interest to you. That's a neat group. How about OpenStaxCollege.org? This is the new one. This just came out. I was telling you about it. It's, it's at Rice University in Houston, and they've had a group called Connections. Um, years, one of the best organizations for f open educational materials. I've been a little weak on books, but they, what's strong about that, if you're interested in um, course materials, videos, animations, things like that, Connections is good for that. They've spun this off, and they've got a bunch of money, and they're going to focus and make really high quality professional textbooks, so it's a start. Because, you know, textbooks are just getting too expensive. So you're starting to see this kind of stuff, which is really neat. We're early on this. But, um, so, um, can you show them Creative Commons? It'll be the last thing. And if you have any questions, uh, let us know. Where's that? That's... This is the Creative Commons website. It actually has search tools, too, within it. Um, but I'm just going to show you the licenses, because I think it's kind of neat. The rubric for online instruction that we have at Chico State is under Creative Commons. We share that with everybody. We just ask that they give us a Y line. But here's, here are the different licenses. So anyway, this is really cool. And you can add these to anything you create. and. Um, and then the browser, web browsers can find, read them too. Search engines can find them. And so anyway, it's um, just basic. All I want to cover. Any questions? Or anything else we should cover? So yeah, feel free to contact any of us or your subject librarian too for help in finding any of these materials. You know. I learned a new thing that there's such a thing as book chairs. I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks for coming.